Hey everybody, how you doing? This is about to be a really fun video, but I'm sitting here answering a bunch of you guys' comments. You guys know I'll respond to every single comment, but it's bowl season right now. It's about to be muzzle loader season, and a bunch of you people are asking for muzzle loader videos. And one of the main ones you guys are saying is do a muzzle loader video in ballistics gel. Well, I've already done one, and I've done another video on the chronograph. So for all you guys who are new, I'm going to re-edit these couple videos real quick. Um, let me edit in this footage real quick of a ballistics gel and chronograph footage that we did before. So you guys can see if you hadn't already. Appreciate y'all watching. Check out this muzzle loader footage we got here. Hey everybody, how you doing? This is about to be a really fun video. But in this video, we'll try something I've never tried before. It's almost muzzle loader season, so I just got my muzzle loader ready. We're gonna try different powder charges. And the bullets I got out here, some 245 grain power belts. And the powder that I've always used, I literally bought this box 10 years ago. It's Pyrodex pellets. Each one of these is supposed to be the equivalent of 50 grains of powder. I always shoot 100 grains because the first time I shot it, I loaded it with 150 grains and the scope cracked my face wide open. There was blood everywhere. So I swore to myself I'd never shoot a muzzle over the 150 grain charge again. But we're going to do it just for you guys today. Here's what we're going to do shoot one with 50 grains of powder, one with 100 grains of powder, and then 150 grains of powder. Every single shot's going to be that 245 grain power belt. And we're going to put them through the chronograph. So. If you guys would like to know how much powder you should run, you'll know. I've read a lot before that people typically use 90 grains. Well, you can't use 90 grains when you're using 50 grain pellets, but I've always run 100. I cannot tell you how many deer I've taken with 100 grains of powder, but let's we'll see what happens today. My opinion, I don't think you need more than 100. We might find out today that you don't even need more than 50, and that would save you money and your stuff would last a lot longer, but let's take three shots here quick and just see what kind of bullet speeds we can get. I honestly have no clue, but I'm gonna take a guess just for fun. That's a big heavy bullet. I think the speeds are gonna be around 1500 feet per second, maybe less for the 50. Hey! And maybe a little more for the 150, but let's see what happens. All right now, Got the chronograph set up. I'm gonna try to do a little picture in picture so y'all can see the chronograph speeds here, but got this loaded up with just 50 grains of powder. Hopefully that's enough to shoot the bullet out of the barrel. I've never done 50 grains of powder, but I've read that people do it. So, all right, 50 grains of powder with that 245 grain bullet. Let's see what we can do here. I didn't turn the chronograph on. <laughs> Dang it! Let me reload this up here quick. <laughs> I heard that double on that one. Bang, bang. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. That was neat. I hope the camera caught it good. I should have known. Should have known. Ready? Well, <laughs> he jabbed one of these down in here real quick. Paul just ran out and turned the chronograph on this old muzzle loader see that one shot it's already so dirty i can just about barely load it might have to clean it just to do the next two shots I feel like that's not all the way down in there but it might be a lot of people mark that little stick all right well get another primer here this is love for y'all for science all right let's shoot this again 50 grains of powder with the chronograph on Uh, Y'all saw it on the other camera, but that looked like 700 something. That's a lot slower than I guessed. Wow. 781. 781. Now, just to show y'all what I'm doing, I take this 20 gauge shotgun brush and I'm going to run it through here. If I was using this for deer hunting tomorrow, I'd be giving this a real good clean. But for the sake of us being able to load this sucker for this video, 
That's what I'm doing out here quick. Man, that stuff smells like straight rotten eggs. It's a very old muzzle loader. But, check this out. Yep, I'm touching it with my fingers, y'all. Comment that you're not supposed to do that. I'm taking two of those plugs now. And then another one of those bullets. You guys can see I'm actually loading bullets in here. Get my rammer out. Push that thing down in there. Yeah, boy. 100 grains of powder. Let's see, uh, see how much faster. Man, 781. That will still take a deer down. Oh, so. yeah. So it might knock your distance down. Me, where I hunt, I only hunt, you can only see 30 yards. So that would probably work for me. If you're hunting like 150 yards with a muzzle loader, you might need the hunter. I don't know. What do you think? You think double the powder is going to hit a thousand feet per second? Uh, yeah. Paul says, yeah. Well, let's see what happens. 100 grains of powder. I'm going to guess 900 feet per second. Thirteen twenty-two. That yeah. almost doubled the speed. That surprised me. So now here's the test, guys. We're gonna triple that powder load. Is it gonna triple the number? Think we get two thousand feet per second out of one hundred and fifty grains? No, I'm gonna say sixteen. Sixteen. Well, if I can get this uh... primer, not wanting to come out of there. All right, now, just so y'all don't think I'm cheating, here goes one, two, three, and I know, again, you're not supposed to touch those, but whatever, and, uh, yeah, another one of those bullets. We have 781, 1322, and let's see what this one does. I probably should have ran that brush down here, but see if we can load it. I hope we can. Oh yeah, it'll go. Yep, that's in there. Let's grab a primer. And see what she does. If y'all haven't seen it, we're also about to film this stuff in ballistics gel. So y'all check it out. Somebody honking their horn out here. I don't know who that is. But anyways, let's see what kind of speed we can get out of 150 grains of powder. Hope I don't split my face open like I did the last time. Come on. There we go. I can see it with my scope. 1606. I was right. Yep. Paul hit it almost dead on. So... Pretty cool, guys. So, 50 grains, 700 some odd, 100 grains, 1300 some odd, and 150 grains, 1600 some odd. So, that's pretty cool. It doubled, and then it did like a 50% bump-ish from the first one. But hey, that was really cool. Now we know the speeds. I'm gonna have to go clean this sucker really, really good, but. Hey, everybody, how you doing? Let me get this up so you can see my face. This is about to be a really fun video, but I was up all night melting this gel down. No joke. I think I went to bed at four and got back up at seven or something. But it's about to be muzzleloader season in Tennessee, so we're out here shooting muzzleloader. But got to thinking, I have never seen anyone make a ballistics gel video with muzzleloaders. So here's what we're going to do. We already chronographed these three different powder loads if you haven't seen that video check it out but i've got a 245 grain power belt and then we're going to shoot this gel once with each load 50 grain 100 grain and 150 grain powder loads and these are just those power decks pellets and judging off the speeds which we already know if you haven't seen it it's kind of cheating since we know the speeds but these are 50 cal bullets and I think we ought to be able to catch all three of them 
in this much gel. This is what, 36 inches of gel. Ought to be pretty cool. I'm gonna try to get some slow-mo cameras going on the gel so we can see what it does. But I think we're gonna catch all of them. 50 grain, 100 grain, 150 grain. Let's get to shooting, check out what it does to this gel, and hopefully we can catch them. All right, I got the gel blocks lined up down there. I got the 50 grain load in here, but I didn't put a primer, so let me grab a primer quick. And we're gonna shoot them right in a row and try to go quick. 50 grain, 100 grain, and then 150 grain. If I can get this primer loaded in here. There we go. I can just about guarantee you we're gonna catch it in this gel, but let's see what happens with it. I hope I can hit it. Well, yeah. did I hit the gel? Oh, I so. That first pop went off, and then I flinched. At 50 grain, I don't know what it was. I might need to clean this gun. All right, here's a 50 grain powder charge. See if I can hit that gel here. Hopefully, I can. Oh, I caught it. Yeah, I'm bad. <laughs> Sweet. Well, we caught the first bullet. Let's load up the 100 grain charge. Well, he went into the second block. There's one pellet, two pellet, and a bullet. Well, that makes me happy we caught the bullet at least. I figured we would. Now there's a hundred grain charge. Get this primer down in this one. See what happens with the hundred grain. All right, here's the hundred grain charge. See if this goes all the way through it. That one definitely had some more kick on it. It's not flopping the, the blocks up though. That You know, like when we hit it with a 450 Bushmaster or something? Yep. Almost. It's almost like we're hitting it with a, a pistol round. And then I'm going to pop three of these 50 charges in here. I know you're not supposed to touch them. It'd be alright. And one of these bullets. This thing's super dirty, but I think I can still cram one of these down in there. Oh, yeah. Now, let's see what happens with this one. Got the slow-mo running out there. You know what, that scope came and hit me in the face. I wasn't resting it. That hurt, smashed my glasses in my face. You're not blooding, are you? I don't know yet. No. You gotta be prepared for that 150 grain. But let's run up there and take a look at the gel real quick. All right, so hopefully we had some good slow-mo footage for you guys and seeing those bullets zing through there. But normally when you shoot a block with a rifle round, it boom, and you really see the gel either flip off when we shoot it with 458 SOCOM or 450 Bushmaster, those blocks just completely do a backflip and fly off the table. So that was almost like shooting it with a pistol round. But look at those travel lanes through that block. That is super cool. Let's look at it from the top. 
you can see those real distinct one two then three whichever that one was looks like it was tearing something up something real good that must have been the last one you can see how these lines are real skinny and kind of defined then that one's like hey i'm messing you up real good but there's one that must have been the 50 grain one barely made it into the second block and then hmm yep then the 100 grain one is right here almost left and then it looks like one of them did come out the back but let's uh see if we can cut those out of here real quick uh the 100 grain charge and the 150 grain charge left yeah there's two little bitty holes out the back oh i could have swore i seen that hundred in there nope yep both thumbs gone so there's only one bullet in here for us to dig out and that's the uh 50 grain powder charge yeah there it is right there there it is check that out so 245 grain power belt 50 grains went through about 20 inches of gel then both the 100 and the 150 grain zinged through both of those but pretty cool hopefully we got some good slow-mo footage and yeah there's the round didn't do any expanding or anything like that i don't know the other ones may have going a lot faster but i can tell you one thing you shoot a deer with these i've never had one go more than 20 30 yards but pretty cool stuff thanks for watching the video today guys let me know if you guys like muzzle loaders and if you've ever seen any gel tests with muzzle loaders or maybe some different rounds but big shout out and a big thanks to the heavy metal channel you guys go check them out and subscribe if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe to hootie hoo if you haven't already we'll see you on the next one hootie hoo